Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, reports have surfaced that the FBI in the 1960s thought that the first Ali Liston fight, the fight where Ali wins the title, was rigged. Right? And so, as you can imagine, all over YouTube, people are concerned about it. In the Twitter sphere, people are concerned about it. The idea is that Liston, who everyone knew, had friends in the mob, may have thrown the fight to get some kind of betting payoff. Right? Well, first, let me point out the obvious. We're talking about the 1960s. Muhammad Ali, for many, was a transcendent figure. Keep in mind, across racial lines, right? He's a transcendent figure. Because Ali, of course, refused to go to Vietnam. Many college students at the time in the United States didn't want to honor the military draft here, right? We would later do away with the draft, right? And, of course, Ali, for many black people, was an inspiration because he fearlessly proclaimed himself the greatest and talked about discrimination against people of color, right? So... Given that the FBI at the time had a hit list, right, people they wanted to discredit. That list, by the way, included Martin Luther King Jr., right? What I want people to do is to actually Google J. Edgar Hoover's FBI and their treatment of African Americans in the 1960s here online, right? What they'll find, quite frankly, is that that agency, at that time, in my opinion, lacked credibility when it came to dealing with people of color, especially people of color who were viewed as role models to much of the public. Right? Understand, J. Edgar Hoover, right, wasn't fond of the civil rights movement or the anti-war movement. And Muhammad Ali, quite frankly, is at the focal point of both movements. So I'm not surprised by any FBI report that's critical of Muhammad Ali at any time during the 1960s. Let me also point out, too, that people need to look back even further in history and look at all these ridiculous reports of Jack Johnson participating in allegedly fixed fights. By the way, there's some videos up here on YouTube that actually have the old soundtrack on them, where, of course, the speaker himself is trying to lead you to believe that the only reason Jack Johnson was heavyweight champ was because fights were fixed, right? So it was with Muhammad Ali through the FBI's eyes in the 1960s. Right? The first point I want to make here is consider the source. Okay? An FBI report? That's supposed to have credibility with me? Here's a shock. They're actually criticizing an African-American celebrity? Is anyone here on YouTube really taking that seriously? Does anyone really think here on YouTube that the FBI spoke with Sonny Liston, the opponent? Or spoke with anyone who is alleged to have fixed the fight. So the first thing I want people to do is to consider the source. The second thing I want people to do is to actually look at the film of the fight. Now I know Liston, the champion, was a huge favorite going into the fight. Huge favorite. Right? No question about it. But understand that sometimes the public perception is wrong. 
One of my favorite rounds in history is the first round of this fight. And what you're going to see when you look at the first round is a younger man bringing superior foot movement and feints into the heavyweight division. Right? Understand at that era, Liston's a flat-footed fighter. Right? You look at the fighters before Liston, the champion who he beat up, Floyd Patterson. Right? These guys didn't move. Rocky Marciano, before them, these guys didn't move anything remotely resembling the kind of movement that Muhammad Ali brought into the ring. So as you look at the first round of the fight, Liston's not throwing the first round of the fight. Liston is getting schooled in the first round of the fight by a fighter who, quite frankly, doesn't even throw that many punches. Right? Ali is moving around the ring. Liston is trying to cut off the ring. Cannot do it. I quite frankly believe that whoever the genius at the FBI was who came up with this report may not have fully appreciated the fact that Muhammad Ali's foot speed gave him a decided advantage over a fighter who was widely perceived at the time as being a dominant heavyweight champion. Right? Joe Lewis, believe it or not, is one of the color commentators for the fight. Right? You can actually listen to his commentary. He actually calls Sonny Liston one of the great champions in history. Then the fight starts. We see the speed difference. We see the foot speed difference. Right? Not only that, folks, Ali physically is the bigger fighter. That's not a thrown start of the fight. That's a brilliant start of the fight. Right? Maybe some novice looking at the film didn't understand what Ali brought to the table. I'm here to tell you that Ali, simply put, is probably history's fastest heavyweight champion in terms of hand speed. When Ali was young and still had his legs in the 70s, excuse me, in the 60s, he was probably the most elusive heavyweight champion. Right? Ali was a great fighter. That's what comes through in that first round on film. Now let's talk about another portion of the film. And this is something that really the critics of the fight need to consider. Right? Ali's corner maintains. Right? And keep in mind, Ali's corner had people like Boxing Hall of Famer Angelo Dundee in the corner. They maintain that after a Bad start by Sonny Liston, right? Because Liston can't catch Ali. That someone in Liston's corner loaded Liston's gloves, put liniment on the gloves, and that the liniment then gets in Ali's eyes. Now think about this. As you're watching the film, if this fight is supposed to be fixed, why is Liston on his front foot doing his best to try to catch up with a blinded Muhammad Ali in the middle of the fight. Right? Ali literally has something in his eyes. If they wanted us to believe that this fight was rigged, why does it look like Liston is swinging for the fences? Liston's literally going for it, going for the knockout. Also, if Liston is supposed to throw the fight, What's Lineman doing in the ring? <laughs> why, why would they throw the fight while actually trying to blind Ali during the fight? It makes no sense. It makes no sense. So Ali literally is dodging an oncoming Sonny Liston while he cannot see. Angelo Dundee claims he put his finger in Ali's eye, put it in his eye, and it started burning. It's actually a famous moment in boxing, 
right? The way it looks on film is you're looking at Sonny Liston, who twice knocked out Floyd Patterson early, trying to catch up with one of the premier defensive fighters in the history of the sport, and Ali is rolling with punches. He sticks his hand out to try to keep Liston at distance, right? And you see him blinking his eyes. Just, just food for thought. If there's anything sketchy about the fight, it's the question of how the liniment gets in Ali's eyes. That's the only sketchy thing I see in this fight. Right? Let me go one step further. It's clear that by the sixth round, Liston cannot catch up with Ali. Ali's too fast. We've seen this before. Right? So Liston, of course, knowing he had a rematch clause, decides to give up his title in between rounds sitting down. We've seen that in other fights, right? Fighters, Oscar De La Hoya, Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao was too fast for De La Hoya. De La Hoya was getting beaten up. So in between rounds, De La Hoya decided, that's it for me, right? Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran, in really what was a close fight. But Duran's getting embarrassed. He can't catch up with Ray Leonard. Ray Leonard at one point does a windmill with his right hand and hits Duran with his left hand. Right? Duran, a proud guy, says no mas. It happens in boxing. Right? Sonny Liston knew he had lost the first part of the fight against Ali. Folks, Ali was just getting started. You know that because when Liston doesn't come out for that round, Ali does the shuffle in his corner. Still has the spring in his legs. Right? This is vintage Ali. Anyone looking at the end of the fight who then reaches the conclusion, gee, who would give up their belt on the stool? doesn't understand the history of boxing, can't explain moments like Oscar De La Hoya, right, giving up against Manny Pacquiao. If you're a champ and you know you're slower and you're getting embarrassed by a faster moving opponent, right, things like this happen, especially when you feel in your heart that you have a rematch clause. Let me make another point too. Just like rappers, and we saw this at the NBA All-Star Game, you saw Drake there, you saw Nelly there. Just like rappers hang out with professional athletes, right? They're often from the same background and stuff like that. That's the same way that gamblers will hang out with professional athletes. Right? We know that many professional athletes like Las Vegas, right? We're hearing stories about Tiger Woods in Las Vegas, right? Uh, I personally ran into Ricky Williams on a casual weekend in Las Vegas, uh, the former running back, right? Um, athletes like Las Vegas. I believe Shaq has a condo in Las Vegas. You know, here's a shock. Gamblers also like Las Vegas, right? Also, you know, many of these athletes are fans of the sport. We know Floyd Mayweather, who lives in Vegas, right, likes to gamble on boxing and football and other sports, right? So you can imagine, you know, Floyd might actually be interested in talking to guys gambling on the same events, right? Gamblers talk to each other. You go into a sports book and people say, hey, who do you like in that game? What do you think about this point spread? Have you heard this guy's injured? Have you heard this team might not be playing this guy? Right? That's what people who are interested in sports do. Now, the fact that Sonny Liston knew some gamblers, whoop de doo Big deal. By the way, the report apparently mentions that this gambler also knew Wilt Chamberlain, 
big deal. You know, what are they going to claim next? That some NBA player lost the slam dunk contest because they were hanging out with the rapper? I mean, come on. You know, the bottom line is being heavyweight champion is so valuable monetarily that in my opinion it's almost impossible to bribe the heavyweight champion. Just just logistically think about it. How much would it take for me to bribe Vladimir Klitschko? Realistically, isn't Klitschko making enough money? If Klitschko is making millions of dollars for a fight, and I understand back then they made less, but trust me, these heavyweight champs were making hundreds of thousands of dollars back then, which is worth millions today. I can tell you, in doing research, Floyd Patterson made $250,000 in 1957 for his fight against Pete Rademacher. Right? This Ali Liston fight is mid-60s, later than that. Right? I can tell you Liston made at least six figures on the fight. The point is simply this. Bribing a heavyweight champion is harder than it sounds. Right? You would have to come up with millions of dollars. Right? Think about Oscar De La Hoya, Manny Pacquiao. How much would it take to bribe Oscar to lose that fight? Think about it, too. If Oscar were foolish enough to take a bribe for that fight, and I'm not saying he did, but if Oscar were foolish enough to take a bribe, the only reason I'm mentioning that fight is Oscar quit on his stool, just like Sonny Liston did. Right? The point is simply, he would be losing more money than he would make by beating Manny Pacquiao. You beat Manny Pacquiao, that sets up your next fight, your next fight's for millions of dollars, you still have the belt, you know, you have the increased legacy. In terms of post-career opportunities, you have the higher profile. You might get that job that they reserve for elites like Lennox Lewis or Roy Jones. You know, the guys, Emmanuel Stewart. You know, the guys HBO has on their telecasts, right? And so, all I'm saying is the very idea of a bribe, in my opinion, bribing a heavyweight champ to lose his title is a bit ridiculous. Keep in mind, Ali was the Olympic gold medalist. Even though Ali was a big underdog, this would be quite a feather in Sonny Liston's cap. Right? Also, if you believe these cynics, there's some who believe Liston threw the second fight, the phantom punch fight. Really? So you're telling me Sonny Liston is better off getting bribed to lose his heavyweight title and then to lose the second Ali fight and be out of the heavyweight title mix than he would have been simply collecting the big money that having the heavyweight title would bring him? Come on. So consider me a skeptic of an FBI report from the mid-60s that claims that there was something untoward in a heavyweight title fight involving two African-American icons, right? I view the FBI with suspicion from that era. Hell, I view the FBI with suspicion today, right? The bottom line is you need to consider the source. You also need to consider the fight, right? Sonny Liston having a problem catching up with Ali. Is that because of Ali's foot speed, hand speed, and ring brilliance? Or is that because Sonny Liston is throwing the fight? Also, if Sonny Liston is throwing the fight, why would he be trying to cut off the ring at Ali when Ali has something in his eyes and can't see for a round? Why is Liston actually trying to load up on his punches? Finally, Liston quitting on his stool. Haven't we seen this before? Haven't we seen fights where guys say, hey, no moss can't continue. It's not my night tonight. Does that mean that the fight was rigged? I think the fight was legitimate. Let me get your thoughts. Leave your comments for me here online. Let's all read them. I think Ali won the title, simply put, because he was a champion. Thanks for stopping by.